In this video, I'll show you Hello. <laughs> Oops. There we go. Hi guys. Welcome. Um, Yarla. I'm sorry. I don't quite know how to pronounce your name, but hello. How are you? Welcome. Thank you very much. I'm just trying to make sure everything is all set on my side. Let me turn this light on as well. And make sure I did everything right this time. It's getting a little easier now that I've done it a couple times. Let's see, let's close that. Hey Corvulus, hey Martin. Oh my goodness, hi guys. You can see me, yay. <laughs> um, yeah, I was rushing around right before stream because I remembered, oh, I need water. Oh, I need the salt. Oh, I need all my paper. <sighs> it's one of those days. Actually, no, it's one of those weeks. It's been a week and a half. <laughs> all right, but I think I am pretty much ready. Um, so how should we do this? First time catching live, love your painting videos. Oh, hi, Linda, thank you. Welcome. I am just about to get started. I don't really know where I wanna start. Today, we are going to be playing with watercolor and salt. Salt technique is a way to get really crazy texture in your paintings. And I use it all the time for my landscapes. It's so good for so many things like leaves and grass and ground cover, like tree bark, just name it and it could be useful. 
I have a couple examples of some of my more, these are like more of my fantasy style art. So maybe not a lot of people on YouTube are familiar with it, but um, I use salt on these as the first layer. And then I built up the depth and the initial, and then the rest of the layers with watercolor and gouache. But you can still see some of that salt texture in the background. And this one is definitely more prominent because I left a lot of the salt texture showing through. Uh, and oops, let me move my mic. You can see I painted around it to make it look like it was lots of little growies. So you can either like let it show through and you can still see a lot of it in the background. Uh, but it you can get really really crazy effects depending on how you use it so I thought it would be really fun to do an experimental stream today where I use lots of different paper types and maybe like split each paper into three or four sections and drop in the watercolor and then the salt and like time it because depending on how quickly you add the salt you get different effects um and then of course the whole time taking diligent notes <laughs> but then we have like this amazing um uh, selection of pages to reference in the future when well i do i can i'm more than happy to share the results with everyone like maybe through photographs or something but then in the future i just like quickly reference like okay what kind of texture do i need and i know exactly how to do it so that's the plan uh your week is a struggle oh i understand i my brain is kind of fried i'm i it's i'm in like dress down mode right now because i haven't got I haven't slept much and it has been really disturbed sleep because I sent out all the Kickstarter stuff yesterday and the logistics of doing that just sort of melted my brain, <laughs> but it's done. It's out. It's on its way to everyone. And, it, and, um, video kid, she's down in the UK. She already got hers in less than a day. She already got it. I am like, I haven't even typed in the tracking numbers yet. So it's kind of crazy. Uh, it's exciting. So all that work is, is worth it. It's like good. It's just done. Hey, Mephaz. I, I knew it was you. Hello. Hey, Ben. Welcome, guys. So I think maybe I'll start off with the smaller ones and then like work our way up to the bigger paper. I have... Strathmore watercolor postcard paper, which I use all the time. It's one of my favorite um, small types to paint on because it's already in a little block. And because I've used it for so long, I know how to make it work. <laughs> uh, happy Friday. Yes. Hey, slave of hell. <laughs> this Twitch looks strange. I'm, I'm repping my Twitch sweatshirt for today. Not on purpose, but I was like, well, I need to get dressed <laughs> for stream. Grab anything that's close. And this other paper I have is fluid watercolor paper, which some people have heard of. I've, I've talked to a few people on Twitch about it, but it's, I would say it's more on the more affordable side. I don't think it's cotton, which is probably why it's cheaper, but I've used it a few times with success <laughs> relative success uh and i have this size and i also have a really big like 8 by 20 like it's really long and skinny kind of like this but giant version so it's fun for uh using for landscapes uh we also have some saunders waterford but this is the rough paper so it has like tons of texture you can see their example there i have hot press which is my nemesis <laughs> but i've used it more and more lately and i'm it's like slowly growing on me and i, I do want to get better with it and then of course old reliable we have our arches cold press my favorite paper ever if we have time for it i also have my large sketchbook well, I guess I wouldn't call it a sketchbook, but it's in the form of a sketchbook. 
Uh, this is Bockingford and it's rough paper again. So really, really textured. This is an example of one thing I did with it. If you use granulating colors, especially you get these really intense textures. Uh, so that's, so I may do a little bit on that cause I don't think I've ever tried salt on this one. We'll set those aside for now. Thomas the Tank Engine. <laughs> the funny thing is I know exactly what that emote looks like, so it still works for me. <laughs> uh, you're gonna be studying abroad this spring. Do you have any advice on the best paper and paints to pack? I'm gonna be so sad without all my stuff. <gasps> oh God. I love packing for trips and I will spend days torturing myself by packing and unpacking and un and repacking trying out all these different combinations of stuff I want to bring but it's like a an enjoyable form of torture <laughs> like I, I hate it but I love it um I hate the the uncertainty like oh what if I need this oh no what if I don't bring this and I really want to do it at the, in the moment like that part I don't like but I really enjoy thinking about it and do and, and packing for it and but the, the funny thing is like more often than not I pack up like my first initial pack I have way too much stuff and I'm like thinking about it for a couple days and I'm like eh, I probably don't need this set of like 30 watercolor tubes I probably could just bring a limited color palette and so I'll start like uh, I'll start dwindling it down and I always end up with like stuff that can fit in my hand and I go on the trip and I'm like more than happy with it and so that initial feeling of oh my god I need everything I need all my supplies I need I need one of everything so I don't miss out on any opportunities that really never happens to me on my trips because usually like when you're traveling or going when you're out doing stuff like you're busy unless it's literally just a painting trip um, squeezing in sketching and drawing and stuff is it's easy to just use a small setup I think it's more enjoyable in a, in a way because you don't have to like make all those decisions you just take out your pack and you paint um, but Linda are you a oil painter watercolor what kind of stuff do you do do you ever wonder what lukewarm press paper would be like <laughs> lukewarm press yeah I wonder what hot press versus cold press you know it'd probably just be kind of textured but not much hey Russ uh, Rusty Rustislav sorry if I've mispronounced that Ben I recommend not inhaling chocolate into your lungs okay let's start with two sh two packs of the small paper We're gonna do your watercolor and gouache not gonna risk packing your oils that's I always start off with wanting to bring my oils and I never like I usually chicken out because <laughs> it's a big commitment it, it really has to be an easy travel like I I still have never flown with them um, so like a car trip would be fine but yeah I even with my water mixable oils I I'm going to Jamaica in January for my dad's retirement and I have been really considering bringing my oils and that's a big commitment and I'm like I'm dying to do it but I'm I just know it's gonna be such a huge hassle because I need so much stuff I need my push shot box and my wet panel carrier and my tripod and like all of that extra stuff where if I just had my watercolor kit like this I would be fine with with just like this and throw that in a backpack get your spray bottle you know so much less stress <laughs> uh, yeah but when I think about it in terms of how much paint to bring if I refill all of these pans 
depending on how long the trip is. For me, it's about a week. So if I refill all of these pans, that is more than enough paint to get me through it, even if I paint every day multiple times. So um, that's probably what I'm gonna do for this trip. And, and I'm also gonna bring some of my gouache tubes, uh, but my biggest uh, thing that's gonna take up space is my paper <laughs> because I wanna bring a couple of my paper blocks. I might bring my bigger uh, paper that I just showed you, the Buckingford. But yeah, it's, it's, um, it's a, it's fun to think about all of those things. I try to think about it logistically, like, okay, what do I act, what will I actually be doing? Don't fantasize, like try to really sit down and walk yourself through every single day and how much you're going to be able to paint 45 minutes till you can go home. Excellent. So I use Himalayan coarse grade salt. I got this, uh, I got like 10 packs of this. It was like a bulk order. I got it three years ago or something and I'm still going through them. And I love, excuse me. <laughs> I love that. It's like Bender. throw that in there. This stuff grinds up really, really finely and it almost gets kind of powdery. So it has a really interesting effect or you can use it almost raw. Uh, but what I do basically is just make sure this is pretty much full to about there and then replace that. And depending on how tight I do this little guy it it pushes this down and it will make it either really really fine or really really coarse so if I barely tighten this at all I'll get like huge chunks of salt if I if I tighten it extremely finely like to the point where I can't turn it anymore almost I'll get extremely fine almost powdery salt and each one has a very different look to it so we're gonna do tests we're gonna do like both Maybe to do ultra fine, medium, and extra coarse or something like that. Thank you, Linda. I am really excited for it because I've never been anywhere tropical. This is like a once in a lifetime trip for me, probably. <laughs> um, and I am dying to paint all of the amazing colors of the ocean. And like, I love coastal scenes in general anyway like your idea with the studio on wheels. Yes, Corvulus, but in a plane. <laughs> oh God, except I'm afraid of heights and I don't think I would want to be like leaning out the window painting. Gone for four months. If you can find a close affordable art store above my campus. Yeah, that would be a good solution. You could bring like your favorite items, but then stock up on a couple things when you're there. So you don't have to travel with it. But one thing I will say for this process of using salt is it is very messy. Like you're gonna get salt granules everywhere. Your desk is gonna feel very gritty for a while unless you're gonna like thoroughly clean everything after. But I'm still, I, I like wipe it down usually between sessions and I still find salt on everything. Uh, another idea for the trip, ship stuff ahead or leave stuff there for another trip. Oh yeah. If you're going somewhere that you can do that, that's a good idea. Uh, I'm probably never going to go back after this trip. So I would have to make sure I bring everything. Oh, and the other, for this particular trip, my, um, uh, Deborah, that's a great idea for my trip next May for going to Denver. So I'm really going to have to think about that. I think I can probably ship stuff to my friend in Boulder. Oh my gosh. Brilliant idea. <laughs> uh, for the Jamaica trip, it wouldn't really work because I don't have, uh, you have to like pay extra for baggage on your plane. So if I was going to bring stuff back with me, I would have to plan that ahead. Um, okay. So I'll write down what I'm doing first because I usually forget to do that. 
So the first one will be... Um, we'll do fine. And then medium, which I don't know exactly how to quantify that, but we'll figure it out. And coarse. So I'll do three. I'm going to use the same color for each one. So it's like really obvious between them. Which color should I use? I don't want to use. The other thing is if you're using very, very highly staining colors, I've noticed that it sometimes doesn't act the same as other colors. So you might have to experiment with every single one of your colors. Uh, if you're planning a commission or a, a bigger painting or something like that, and you're using salts, you just want to double check how it acts with your particular paint. Um, but well, we'll choose one that I use all the time. Like, but I want it to be, I don't want it to be too dark. So I won't go with neutral tint, maybe indigo, maybe indigo. Indigo is a good color. It should show the result pretty well because it's darker. Don't have to pay extra for emotional baggage. <laughs> oh, Ben. <laughs> I've been wanting to make swatches for salt. Hey, Ashley. Welcome. Yeah, I've been wanting to do this for so long. And I did do a little bit of this back in the day before I did a commission. But I lost those sheets and I have no idea. So I'm going to... So there's, there's two things we're going to do. The first one is fine, medium, and coarse ground salt so there's different there are different size granules and we're gonna do uh the top section will be like immediately placing the salt in it and the bottom section will be waiting a certain amount of time like a minute i don't know i have to figure out a time but we'll start with the top one and just like start and let that dry i will tape off each one. Still in bed? Excellent. I feel very privileged to be seeing you in bed. I mean, that sounded weird. You know what I mean? Thank you for waking up to me. Or, <laughs> never mind. We're just gonna move on so if any of you guys have these paper types and you are doing your own experiments I would love to see the results I don't know how you could sh you could share it with me on social media or something or even just email to me I am so fascinated by this kind of stuff I am obsessed with experimenting so Yeah, seeing other people do these kinds of things is really fun too. Okay, now we can get going. So the top is going to be immediate. And what do we have to do? So I'm going to double check that this is the acceptable. Okay, yeah, so that's the extremely fine, almost powdery salt. So that's what we're going to do for the first one. And like I said, it's going to be immediate. So we'll put those aside for a second. Good morning, Jimmy. And we're going to do some indigo. I'm going to actually put some on here so that In case, in case I accidentally contaminate it with salt, I don't want it to be on my palette. So there is our indigo and I may leave that out in case I have to refill it. My hair is driving me crazy today. So first things first, let's do to make it 
Um, should I just do a solid color or should I try to do a gradient? What do you guys think? I don't have a lot of space on these pages, so it's not going to make a huge, it won't be like in incredibly noticeable. But also there is cat hair stuck to it, of course. Let's just start with a normal brush stroke and if it All right, so there's one. What we're gonna do is just let it sit. But next, we're gonna get some slightly, so that's really tight. And if I loosen it a little, we'll try that. It's still kinda powdery. I'm like just putting it into my water so it doesn't spread everywhere. So now I'm going to have really salty water. What brand of indigo? This is Sennelier. It's why it is my favorite brand. Uh, I also love Schminky and Daniel Smith, but most of my favorite colors are in Sennelier. <laughs> my, my most used and my favorites. Oops. Okay, I think that should do. Now it's a little bit thicker. So we'll go to the medium. So you can, I don't know if it's, it's obvious to you guys, but they're much bigger granules on the second one. There are some decent sized ones on there, but there's a lot more powder involved too. So the second, the first one is the fine and then we have the bigger one. So, but we, we, the, you can't really see how it, the effects until it's completely dry and you cannot blow dry it. Otherwise it stunts the flow and the, and the process. So we just have to be patient. So we're just going to keep going with the papers and as they begin to dry, we can look back and see what we get. Soak up a tiny bit of that extra. All right. So we are doing the course and for the course, I'm actually just going to use a sprinkle with my hand like this. So I'm going to hold it. There we go. That is some big salt. <laughs> <laughs> and it's working very quickly. I mean, look how it already is soaking up a ton of that darkness. Okay. Uh, we can start on the bottom half as well. So I'm thinking we should do a minute. We should wait a minute before we apply the salt because this paper does dry pretty fast. I can't wait too long. Is there a reason you don't wet the paper first? Mm, just for this, it's just swatches. So um, if I'm doing a big wash on a huge piece of paper, then I might get the paper wet and then throw in the watercolor just so it spreads a lot better. Um, but we're, since I'm just doing swatches, I don't, I'm not really concerned with that. Um, hi Leslie. Hey May. <laughs> hey Ink. Last time you traveled to Sennelier, it set off a security skid because they never dry all that honey in the binder. Oh my gosh, Linda. 
That's a good point. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, the other idea that I'm... I'm actually considering bringing all my watercolors in this because, first of all, I have traveled with this before. And even though it's supposedly sealed, like it's airtight, I've had it leak out uh, the ed certain edges before and it made a huge mess in my bag. So I'm not too keen on that. I want to bring this to paint in because it's really, really great for that. But what I think I'm probably going to do is put my wet paint into this because this is 100% water and airtight. I actually have gouache in there, <laughs> which I need to clean out. But uh, this, and that's more than enough for all of my paint. Like that holds a ton of paint. So it's really good for gouache. Yeah, that's why I got it. I, 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 a lot of people mention it for gouache and I was like, hmm, I should give it a try because I paint a lot with gouache. But I don't like, I only like it for holding my paint, not necessarily painting out of because just the way that I work, I need to like spread things <laughs> around when I'm painting. So it's really good for, for travel though. Uh, yeah, so let's continue. Although, look at this, guys. This is so exciting. You can already see the differences in the three. Well, I can. <laughs> it's probably not quite as hot. Comparing that with that. I tend to do my salt washes my salt technique with more of a between fine and, and medium because I like to get uh this is also really good for big cells and stuff but I like the more fine texture yeah so let's set the timer for a minute I don't know if that'll be too long because this paper dries fast so We'll, we'll start with these two. You got the calendar. It's beautiful. Oh my gosh. Oh, you already got it. I sent everything out yesterday and Video Kid so far is the first person to show me online that she got the book. And she said she loves it and her little girl read it and read it over and over or she had her read it to her um, and really, really likes it, which like I wanted to cry when she said that. <laughs> okay, so are we ready? We'll start with the Actually, I'll start with the medium because that's currently what the grinder is set at. Uh, problem with dried salt pieces, you can't get off the paper, especially the fine salt is really meany. Yeah, ink, it does happen. Um, a lot of my paintings that I've used really fine coarse or fine grain salt on, it in some areas is basically permanent. <laughs> like you'll always see a little bit of that glimmer, but yeah. Like, I'm not concerned about it. If anything, it might flake off over time, but it won't matter because the salt pretty much leaves this texture. And once you scrape it off, that's the texture that it's going to stay. It doesn't like keep going forever. Sacred Heart, hello, welcome. You're just in time for the medium. So we're going to let that sit for a second for, oh no, start timer. Okay. And this, the point of finding out what happens here is because in the past, what I've done is paint, then wait a little while. Actually one time I waited five minutes and then put salt on it and I had a completely different look. So it might be the paper, it might be the pigment. I'm not quite sure, but that's why these experiments are good. 
It just lives in the painting, yeah. <laughs> the painting stays salty. Uh, I think I mentioned to you guys that I use salt with my water mixable oils. I wanted to test that out and uh, the painting is in the other room, but I could not get the salt out of that at all. So the salt is basically, it came off in a couple spots, but there's some big chunks that are still in there uh, that <laughs> is like, okay, I guess that's a thing now. Timer's up. The paper stayed pretty wet. Isn't this color? I love indigo so much. All right, now we're gonna go back to fine. Okay. Oh, timer. That is a result of fingerprints on the paper. Those dots. That's like the oils on your finger. And you can even see them there and there. Oh my god. <laughs> That's ridiculous. This side is drying much faster because I used slightly less water. So I'm not sure how this is going to work. Like you obviously can't wait till it's completely dry to put it on. But it does still do something um, as it's drying. As long as it's not 100% dry. Hey, Lucy. How's it going? Eight, seven, six, five. Go. That was extra fine. <laughs> I didn't use quite as much as up there. Uh, but let me write. Sixty seconds. The top is immediate. And now we will do the course. painting scene would you use salt on let's see while that is going um, well this is the quickest one I can grab but for like a forest for instance I often use it on the forest floor to get a variety of texture and in the canopy sometimes um, in a landscape with like hills and mountains and stuff, I might use it in the field because then I get like a variety of organic looking texture, a ground cover. Um, and oh, let me get ready. Sorry. Three, two, one. Uh, I showed this one earlier, but this is an example of one of my fantasy illustrations <laughs> and I used salt texture to get all of this that you see here. Uh, a lot of it is covered up in the by the foreground, but I left a lot of it showing through on like the tail of the dragon. Uh, just like basically I painted this dark blue area after the first layer dried after the salt layer dried to make it stand out. So in the end you get a more defined shape, but uh, 
that's definitely an extreme version <laughs> of using it. Okay. Sweet. So we have our three little postcard papers drying. Uh, what type of brand, what brand of water mixable oils do you prefer? Windsor Newton, definitely. I also have a couple Holbein Duo Aqua. Is that what it's called? So these are the ones that I use the most often. For the money, they are absolutely amazing. Like, love them. Uh, and this is one, the uh, whole line duo aqua, which I really, really, really like. This particular color is amazing. It's one of my favorites. And I just started playing with the Jackson's aqua oil, which I also really love. I highly recommend it. I've only tried three different colors in this one so far. So, you know, can't say for sure, but yeah. Those three are my go-to, but Windsor Newton for sure is my main one. Like, especially because you can get a giant tube like this for very little compared to um, pretty much any other brand that I've seen. So starving artists can have fun too. Oh my God, see, now this is like the perfect texture for grassy, a bush in a forest, just ground cover in general. You could just come back in and paint some of the little uh, long branches or grass, grasses around it. So. So next we're gonna do the fluid. Pet portraits and you're thinking salt would be great for a background. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Ooh, okay, let me show you an example of something that I, here, let me go get it. It's hanging on the wall in the other room. <laughs> Ow. Uh, so this is a map. This is something that I started doing this year and I've already got a couple commissions to do more of these of different locations, but it's a map of Scotland, uh, sky actually. And I also have a map of Scotland that's much bigger, but in the background I used salt in the ocean to kind of make it abstract and also just, I love how it looks. So in my opinion, it just went really well uh, with the landmass and just give it that really cool ocean type feeling. So as a background for like a pet portrait or anything really, you could have a lot of fun with that. With the colors and the textures. Thanks, Slave. Thanks guys. I also did a, a Lord of the Rings, a Mordor, well, the Middle Earth map. Where is that? I don't even know where that one is. <laughs> I need to dig it out somewhere. All right, so we're gonna put that away. Oh, my timer's going off telling me I should start streaming. <laughs> Do a map of Midgard, the world of Santa Phoenix. Ah, uh, yeah, sleeve. I remember doing like a digital drawing of it. So I have a little practice already. <laughs> but yeah, if you want to, let me know. I would love to. I love doing probably one of my favorite things to do but I don't do it very often uh, those maps I mean okay next fluid paper 
and I'm gonna split this in half. This time I think I will do, actually I'm not gonna do the timed thing on this one. I'm just gonna do straight up, just like immediately put the paint in. Because I don't use fluid paper as often anyway, but I wanna see what each one will do. start with that and we'll go from the top which will be fine then we'll open it up big as I wanted it to be. There. A little better. <laughs> and of course. These are going to be dry soon so I can actually reuse some of the bigger chunks. What's everyone up to this weekend? For the first time in, I don't even know how long, I am going to have a real weekend. I'm not gonna work all day every day. Like I usually do. Wow, that's already giving a, an intense effect. Going home for Thanksgiving break. Oh, that's right. Thanksgiving is next week. Since we don't celebrate it, I'm like out of sync with everyone. Uh, well, if you're bored on Black Friday, come hang out in my stream because <laughs> I'll be streaming next Friday. Working all day, every day. <laughs> oh, it's what I've been doing for the last many, many months, but... Uh, we're gonna have a chill, uh, I have to confirm if we're doing pizza or not, but pizza and video game night tonight. And then tomorrow, I'm gonna do some illustration in the morning, but then, cause Wolfie wakes up so late, but then I am going to just do art for me. Just do something that I want to do. And then Wolfie and I are gonna hang out. And then Sunday, since it's supposed to be a little nicer on Sunday, we're gonna do a hopefully a hike and I am planning on bringing my painting stuff but you know I can't today wasn't even supposed to rain but it's been raining all day so I can't really <laughs> I just have to like go with the flow basically um Mr. Rogers movie and a tool concert whoa Ashley that's amazing that's a lot Have your house to yourself. Oh, Earth, that's gonna feel wonderful. Yeah, it's true. When you and I, that's the thing. Like I usually work all weekend, all week and all weekend, pretty much. Um, but because I love what I do, it doesn't feel as much like working or like it's not like oh I have to go to work. It's more along the. It's more. The problem falls more in the fact that I realize how tired I am suddenly and that I didn't even have a relaxed, like I didn't have a weekend and then it's already time for the next week to start. And so those are the moments where I'm like, oh, why did I do that to myself? Because if you just work yourself to the bone, you're just not going to have enough energy 
and you'll, you might even start resenting what you do, even if you love it. Yeah, Slave of Hell, I think so. I think so. You've earned it. I didn't even know Mr. Rogers was in a movie that was coming out. <laughs> hey, Chris! <laughs> How's it going? Okay. Next, we're gonna do the bigger paper. We're gonna do the Bockingford, or no, Saunders Waterford. This is the rough paper. Salt falling everywhere. All right, we have a bigger sheet now. So what can I do? Uh, what I'm thinking is we'll do Well, I only need six squares, right? So I can just do... Yeah, that'll be fine. It's Tom Hanks... Wait, what? Tom Hanks is in it? Can't get used to hearing your real name in here. I know. Wait, what was your Twitch name again? <laughs> the, the weird thing, is, especially for me, is because is I know you guys from Patreon as well. A lot of you guys are my patrons who, and on Patreon, I see your real name. So I know you as your as your like your real life Patreon self, and I also know you as your Twitch name. And some of you I've memorized like both, so it's easy for me. Like Troop, obviously I know you, but uh, it's it's so hard to remember a lot of them. <laughs> so either way, I either know you as your your Patreon name, which is also wonderful, or your Twitch name. <laughs> Fantasia! Fantasia! <laughs> Fantasia's here. I gotta like do some kind of uh, name memory thing in my mind. You know? Like there's tricks you can use for memorization. Like basically people who are able to memorize a thousand numbers in a row. They make up stories about every single letter and how they relate every single number and how they relate to each other and apparently you can do that with names too you can like make a really strong visual or a funny story in your head about how the name relates to the person and like it, it's so much easier to remember that way and I haven't really ever tried it but I should um let me get the tape Oh, it's over here. <laughs> like, where did you go, blue tape? Come back to me. <gasps> Ink ore! <laughs> you changed it? Oh my goodness. Well... hope that it ends up being worth it to you. Have you guys been enjoying the YouTube streams? I have to say, I really love the fact that as soon as the stream is over, it automatically becomes a past broadcast for my YouTube channel. So it's an extra video every week for my YouTube channel. Uh, which is why I want it to be useful stuff. Uh, and maybe a little more educational. But yeah, it's just, it's a, it's a nice thing. An easy way to bridge the streaming communities. <laughs> And if anyone watch, is watching enjoys them and you want more streams, you should just come hang out with me on Twitch on Mondays. Is 
Is that common for an 81 year old? Uh... Aw, ink. So left will do fine grain, then medium, then coarse, and the top will be... I'm actually gonna go with... I think I'm gonna do three minute timer on this one instead because this is cotton paper and it takes a lot longer to dry. So I really want the pigment to have a chance to kind of start settling into the fibers then it'll show me like a real difference in the texture. On my arches paper back in the day when I did that experiment, I had to wait six minutes for it to be really noticeable. So uh, hey, Jerema, Jeremalaria. <laughs> so I guess we will just get started. Ooh, let's do the bottom first and let it start drying. I'll actually do a timer. What did I say? Three minutes? That'll just give us a rough idea, at least. So yeah, in like two and a half to three minutes, we will drop the pigment into there. And then for the top ones, I'm in the coarse, so I need to do the middle one first. All right, I mean, I'm in the medium grain. I'm gonna do it on the right side. Mostly. So you can see like, cause this is kind of a gradient. I want to see from the dark to the light and how it looks. Sorry if this is confusing to anyone. I have things, I am keeping everything straight in my head, <laughs> but. Fine grain. And then we have about a minute and a half left to do the timed version as well. You must season your paintings just right. Yeah, I can see the bottom part is starting to dry a little bit, so it'll be interesting to see if this actually does anything. Um, by the time we're doing the, this one, we can check out our postcards because those will be dry. We can take the salt off. So fine. That's like extra powdery. Medium. 
Yeah, see, the bottom half of that is already totally dry, so it's not going to make any effect. But it might be good if you want just like a really subtle comparison, a subtle difference. Okay, so this one, this was the first... I think it's actually not quite dry yet. It looks like it's dry, but it's deceiving. Sometimes the moisture stays underneath the granules, underneath each piece of salt. Uh, and then if you scrape it, you end up like s smearing the pigment across your painting. So you have to be careful. So we'll wait a little longer. And what I usually do, so I actually have several bags of old salt of different thicknesses that I've used on certain colors. Uh, I actually don't have an indigo bag yet, but I will soon. So what I do at the end of this experiment is pour all of the big pieces into a bag and I mark it indigo. And then in the future, if I'm doing any salt washes with it with, and I need giant pieces, I can just use that because it won't, it won't taint it because it's indigo already. And I can reuse it because they're such big pieces. They have very long lasting effects. The fine grain salt you can't do that with because it's basically done the first time you use it. Um, you can maybe get some more uses out of the medium stuff but but yeah the bigger ones you can definitely use again so you don't have to feel like you're wasting that much. Smears paper color across the page multiple times. <laughs> yeah oh I hate that. Hey Larkin how's it going? Yeah, I've definitely done that ink many times, thinking that it's dry and I'm like, ah, oh, yes, I can take the salt off and then pfft, ruined. Bag full of colorful salt, salt grains. I did have a bag that was just a mixture of a bunch of different colors. Uh, I think I lost it in our last move. Thought you were making Finnish flags. Oh, <laughs> hey fish. No, no. Not, not doing any flags today. Okay, we will get the next page ready. This next one is hot press. Uh, but let's see. Yeah, I guess I'll do a timed version, but I might do less time, like two minutes, because I remember it seemed like my hot press dried a lot faster. Oh, I lied though. I actually am going to be working a little this weekend because check this out. This is a ridiculously large amount of tracking numbers that I have to manually type in. <laughs> so, uh, between I think I might just do it tonight and get it over with so that I actually have the weekend, but. Lies. Yay, Slave of Hell gets to go home. A little more pigment. I know Corvulus. Wouldn't that be amazing? Man. I think I'm gonna steal this tape because I don't really need it to stay on there. Oh, and I have to label things before I forget. take breaks between the list. He'll go crazy. I know. I'm going to take breaks between each country or each region, I guess I should say. And probably a couple during the USA version because I have the most amount of packages went to the US, which I find really interesting. Okay. So really quick. Uh...
What did I say it was? What, how many minutes was the bottom one? Three minutes? falling off and making a mess. <laughs> yes, Corvulus, that is our dream, right? How are you today, digital? do them quite even but that's fine <laughs> hot press <sighs> so we'll do the timer again for the first one I'm gonna do two minutes try to make sure it's really a decent amount and not too yeah that should be good All right, Slime of Hell, good luck. See you when you get home. So we'll do the course. Do you like my lovely little tattoo by Vader? I also have additions to my tattoo by Vader. He, he thought he needed to improve it. Was a good one <laughs> they look much worse than they are like that I didn't even feel these ones I just noticed one day that I had them I was like what where did that come from this one I definitely felt and it was because he was on the couch next to me 
Um, and we were just kind of like playing. He had a hair tie and it, it was fun. But something in the other room scared him because he jumps at like any sound. And he like fell, kind of like fell awkwardly off the couch and reached out and my hand was there. So he like fell and as he was falling, his weight was like dug into my hand. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> Those look <laughs> pretty similar, <laughs> but it's okay. I'm covered in salt. I know, right, Ink? <laughs> yeah. Most of the time when he's claws me, it's an accident, so it's not like I can get mad. It's just, it, it's what happens when you're playing with a cat. He's never, like, purposefully hurt me as far as I can tell. He doesn't, like, hiss at me or try to randomly claw me when we're playing. It's always an accident, so... I've learned to just accept it. <laughs> it's just part of the part of the joys of having a cat and playing with a cat. Does he still do the big man walk? He does. It's so funny. I need to record him because <laughs> not only does he do the big man walk, but he like he like pulls his neck in and he like looks tries to like stare at he'll like if he's up on a higher surface um he'll like stare down at you and his ears go straight up and, and kind of back and it just looks like you know he's trying to look really 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 scary <laughs> but i can't help but laugh at him poor baby <laughs> i need to take a photo or a video next time He's done it a couple times to the mirror again, which is really funny. Uh, and then a couple times just to me while we're playing. It's usually when we're doing hide and seek. Uh, so like one of one thing that he loves to do is if I like kind of hide behind a wall or a couch or something like that and peek up at him and he notices me peeking up at him and then I hide again, he goes into stalker mode. And so I'll look back and f try to find him and he's gone and I'm like, Where'd he go? So I like kind of look around and he, the whole time he's just like sneaking up to get as close as he can. And then at the last second he jumps up onto whatever I'm hiding on and he does the whole like mm, big scary tough guy pose. <laughs> just like sometimes it actually does scare me because it just comes out of nowhere. But I instantly just want to grab him and cuddle him. Mm, I think it's still wet. Yeah, a couple of the pieces are still wet underneath. But the smaller ones... Oh, that one's still wet a little bit. It's like the salt kind of keeps it moist for much longer. It does look really good on the hot press. Like the hot press gets so smooth. The gradients in the background can be so smooth. It makes the texture of the salt stand out a lot. <laughs> yeah, I need to get a video of it. It's just so funny. It's like, it's just like, I never think about it ahead of time because I'd have to like set up the camera then get him to kind of be in the right area while we're doing that game. Alright, so the last big, well not the last, but the next big piece, we have the arches. The creme de la creme.
And I think what I'm going to do is five minute timer on the bottom of this one because it's definitely, it, it stays wet for so long. Will you upload these tests to Discord or somewhere? I'm gonna upload them to my Instagram stories and I'm also going, and I'll, I'll save them uh, in their own little like story highlight. And I'm also gonna upload a longer, uh, more high quality version on my Patreon. So it'll include like close-ups of all of them as well as any kind of like notes and thoughts that I have. And also a what I want to do by the end of stream today, oops, once I do all the experiments, I want to do an actual landscape using the salt technique. So. I kind of want to do like a spontaneous painting, you know, like I haven't done that in a while where you put some water and pigment down and this, in this case, I'll be using salt and then I'll come back in and paint whatever I see in it. Probably trees. <laughs> So let me refill a little bit of the paint. Uh, and I have Oh, okay, cool. Let's get the timer ready too. Do you ever get stuck painting the same thing over and over? What do you mean by stuck? Like, what did I say, five minutes? Can you elaborate a little bit? Like you find yourself just doing landscapes and you're not really inspired to do other la another landscape. Uh, I don't feel stuck doing what I'm doing. If anything, I sometimes feel, well, no, I guess not. <laughs> only forest when you could be doing seascapes. Well, the thing is no one's forcing me to do anything. So I can understand how some people, if it was their job to paint forests or their job to paint landscapes, or they're an animator and they have to draw the same character over and over and over again, then I could understand that. But no one's forcing me to do anything. I, I do everything I, because I want to. And even if it's a commission, it's usually not something I normally do, or it's got a twist of some kind. So it keeps it interesting. It's like everything I do is for a reason. Uh, 
Well, there's a couple. So when I'm doing my Patreon postcards every month, I have to do anywhere from 10 to 20 postcards and it's usually the same theme. And sometimes while I'm doing them, I'm like really thinking about all these other paintings I want to be doing. But at the same time, it's still enjoyable because <laughs> it isn't that many. It's not like the end of the world doing 20 of the same thing. Especially because I often use that as an opportunity to practice something. And, that, and so I get into more of like a mindset of learning. All right, so the bottom needs to dry a little bit longer. That goes by fast though. But yeah, Modest Alchemist, do you get, do you have that experience? Do you have to do the same thing a lot and you get kind of feeling stuck? I feel like in that situation, it would be really important to, uh, experiment a lot like force yourself to do something you're not usually doing like if you're only if you're doing landscapes all the time go do figure drawing but i do but i already do that so <laughs> it's like there water they draw the same face on everyone i have heard that and i've noticed it like a lot of people i follow that do character stuff i see the same type of face in almost everything they do it's especially interesting when their faces look like themselves. Like they draw characters that kind of resemble themselves. And I'm like, I wonder if they noticed that. 30 seconds and then we will do the bottom. So we did five minutes, right? Oh shoot, I never marked down what the last one was. What did, did I, what did I do on the hot press? Was it two minutes? one was three okay so the last one was three and this was five I guess I could always go back and double check on the video replay later <laughs> if I needed to. Um, I have like salt on my face. <laughs> okay. And then the last paper. I was gonna use the Bockingford Rough. Do I want to? Or do I not want? Eh, I guess I will.
There's too much stuff. I'll be right back, guys. wanted to hang that thing up again. Okay, we need to make room because this paper is quite big. I might I'm not gonna use the whole thing so let's see oh I forgot to post on my Instagram story let's take a quick photo I'm so bad at remembering to do that. <laughs> YouTube. This time, I think I'll just give myself like half of the paper. We'll use the messy side. middle one is really skinny but whatever it's fine I'll just mentally split those in half um, okay a little more pigment The left side will do the timed version. And I'll do five minutes again because I'm not quite sure how long this paper dries. I'll just keep an eye on it. If it starts to look like it's really drying fast, I'll have to use it sooner. So the top will be fine. Let's remember that. Oh, and then, no, the, the middle will be medium, obviously. I should have had this ready. And the bottom will be coarse. drying 
faster in the darker area. I must not have used a lot of water in there and more pigment than water. So, yeah. Oh, another good thing you can use salt for is uh, ocean, coastline, um, wave splashing kind of thing. So that might actually be a good painting to do as our experiment after this. You can do a spontaneous painting, maybe a painting with a wave in it using the salt. I did that with my Witch's Cottage, which, which Cottage series back in the day. I use salt in the wave splashing. It made a really cool effect. Two minutes and 30. Or no, 2.40. Yeah, a wave, it would be cool. It works for a wave because instead of using masking fluid or something to re um, keep the paper showing through in the splash part of the wave. The salt does pretty close to that, but it also gives it a more organic, natural look than you'd get if you did it like by hand, just with masking fluid. Uh, I may need to do it sooner. So that's three minutes. Cause it kind of seems like it's drying really fast. There. I know sacred. <laughs> I completely understand. I really rarely use masking fluid. I can't be arsed. That's exactly what I say to myself. I'm like, ugh, I can't be arsed with that. <laughs> it's just so messy and annoying and it ruins your brushes and it is goopy and it doesn't do exactly what you want it to do. It smells bad. <laughs> it makes, it's just, ugh. I would, ra like, I'd, I definitely preferred and still prefer to just paint around the areas that I want to keep white even though I can't do that all the time. There's a few situations when I've actually used masking fluid and achieved things that I couldn't normally achieve. So it does have its uses. I, I'll give it that. I just tend to not do things where it, it's required. So. See, this is, oh, I'm going to write down again, what, uh, wait, it was three minutes? Yeah. Well, it'll be obvious. Yeah, I once spilled an entire bottle of masking fluid on my desk and I had basically two desks butted up toge together and it spilled right where the crack was. So the masking fluid went all over the desk and down into the crack and onto the carpet below. And I was just like, oh my God, it was such a disgusting, horrible mess. It's so difficult to clean up. Like you can wait for it to dry and then like try to grab it and pick it up. But when it's in the carpet, it is a disaster. My God, the <laughs> this is kind of insane. I have covered every surface near me in paper covered in salt. <laughs> Mutant desk man. Yeah, it was pretty disgusting. That really smelled bad. Like the whole, it just stayed stinky for ages. 
Wow, this one must have dried really fast because I can barely see a reaction at all on this side. Interesting. Our fluid paper. Okay. Uh, since all of my bigger pieces of paper are taken up with the <laughs> drying salt, I will now move these away. I think I will flip this around. And I'm going to paint on this side. So far on this one, this paper, my favorite look is this one, is the middle, the medium ground salt, where I did it pretty much right away. Although that looks pretty cool too. It's kind of crazy. Look how different that is. So the left side is the medium ground salt immediately placed into the wet watercolor. The right side is the same ground, same, same size, but waiting three minutes before putting it on the paper. It still gives you a lot of texture, but it's not, the, the cells aren't very big at all. In fact, those cells on the finer grain salt are even bigger, which is kind of, like there's hardly any difference between those two, in my opinion. So I don't know, maybe it's just cause this one started drying before I put the salt on to the point of like not making much of a difference. I don't know, weird. Okay, let's quickly find A reference a wave yeah it needs it needs water and which is why if you can time it right, <laughs> you can get some cool effects. If you wait a little bit for the paint to dry, for the water to dry, obviously not too much because then you don't get anything. But like if you want a really, really, really subtle texture, you could just wait till the paint is almost dry and drop in the salt. Bring back the palette. Uh, just going to cut the paper in half. How about we do a spontaneous one on the top? So not gonna draw. What colors do we want for our spontaneous painting? If you use salt water to paint, I've heard of people doing that with ocean water. Let's do 
a little bit of some big salt. Some small salt. I love this uh, green gold. It's very aggressive. It spreads and pushes every other color out of its way. Um, okay, and then in the bottom, we'll do a wave. crashing on some rocks. Mm, where would my horizon? I drew my, my lines are all not straight, so. Also contaminated all of my blue with green. <laughs> which gives me a beautiful turquoise color, which is useful. But I don't want it in there. Welcome back, Corvulus. Very granulating, interesting. I can see that. Yeah, I can see that. This is gonna work and is this gonna be enough? We'll see. We'll see how much it picks up or how much it moves. Oh my god, my phone just fell straight onto the painting. <laughs> Yeah, whenever I do salt washes, I thoroughly clean all my brushes and uh, water container. And if it got on my palette, I clean out my palette. I tend to, well, I, I definitely find random salt on my desk a lot of times, but um, I make sure I take care of the rest of the stuff that I use, the brushes and the palette, because I hate finding salt on there later. It's like chunky paint. Not a good mix.
Ooh, look at that top one, that texture. That's intense. See, once again, there is a teeny little cat hair directly in the center of the sky. Just like everything is perfect in the sky except that little. <sighs> How does he do it? If only it looked like a bird, like if it was a little V shape, if it could work. Yeah, Vader's signature, because he's like, even though you did the painting, I am your overlord, therefore I own the painting. So I get credit. <laughs> a UFO oh god well luckily most of the time if there's a cat hair and it dries I take it off and you can't even tell like it doesn't really leave a mark but yeah <laughs> just figures hi Dennis I am making a mess <laughs> what are you up to today <laughs> I am doing salt experiments I have just completed the test version the test portion of the stream so i have one two three four five six seven eight like eight pages of this that you see different paper types three different sizes of salt uh and then in a couple of them i did different timing like this is immediate this is putting the salt in after like three minutes so we get, so now we have all these test sheets to reference. If we, if I need a certain texture, I know what, what I'll get. And this is, just, I just had a lot of extra space on this paper. So I decided to just do a couple test paintings on here. Um, but yeah, it's, a messy process. There's salt all over my desk and there's definitely big, big chunks all over the floor now. So, <laughs> uh, Let's take a look at the arches, which is the one that I'm the most used to. Okay. This is pretty cool because even though it's extremely subtle, if you wait, what is it? Five minutes. I waited five minutes to put, put this one on. You get a really fine texture, which will be more noticeable once I take the salt off. So it actually could come in handy because I don't always want the texture to be that intense. It's just too much sometimes, but like that could be really useful for some things. This one, I don't even know if it made any difference because it was probably a little too dry to to react but uh, there might be a couple we might get a few pieces of texture on that one um, yeah that's that's the paper I use the most often but the hot press is really intense I think it's the most noticeable high contrast version because the paper is so smooth the texture of the paper isn't really interfering so like you get really noticeable effects it's, 
I think it is the most dramatic. I'm gonna shoot a marker video. Oh, cool! I can't wait to see it. Are you gonna post it this weekend? I wanna see. Uh, I haven't used the marker since I did that video, which was... When was it? Tuesday? I don't know. Um, <laughs> but I had a bunch of people say similar things about how they were uh, kind of freaked out by doing markers and it inspired them to want to try it. And I thought, like, that was really cool because when I did it, I was like, I have no idea how this is going to turn out. I don't even know if I'll post this video because I was so... <laughs> I felt very, uh, well, I felt kind of embarrassed because my drawing, I didn't think the drawing was very good, but it then it is so much about the process and just getting out and trying it and painting and being in the forest. And I think that part is the most enjoyable part. And I have to say that the actual process of doing the marker session was so relaxing, like just no fussing around with water, with paint trays, with things tipping over. Like I could just sit on a tree stump and draw basically. And I had lots of colors up, uh, lots of colors at my disposal. It was very easy. Uh, it was pretty quick. Like I just, you know, I did it a pretty sketchy version of it. So I didn't have to spend too long there and it was extremely cold out. So <laughs> that was good because I would have been totally numb if I was painting. Hey, Tony. Never seen you so vulnerable. <laughs> uh, I feel like I'm, I feel pretty vulnerable every time I do a live stream. So there's that. But on the videos for YouTube, yeah, I just try to look at it more about being involved in the process, less about the final result. Give people an authentic experience. It's like when you can share that side of the, the process, the art. Okay, well, this is taking a, quite a while to dry, so I think I'm just gonna paint a little guy for now while this dries. Where you wear your Twitch hat? Wolfie stole my Twitch hat. I have to get it out of his car. Yes, that would have been really good because it would have been like I have a uniform on because I have my Twitch sweatshirt on today. <laughs> yeah, Wolfie is very particular about his hair and whenever it doesn't look like his anime awesomeness that he usually has, he like wants to hide under a hat. Let's do, let's see. How about three different types of scenes that we could use salt, that, that salt would be useful in? So we have a coastal scene, a forest, and a mountain with like a valley. Such a drama queen. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Let's do the forest since that was like the most recent thing I've been painting anyway. I 
cannot wait. Well, I'm not going to get my hopes up. I want to say I can't wait until Sunday because I'm maybe going to go out and do some plein air painting. But the weather has just been horrendous every time I want to go out. I need to get one of those umbrellas that attaches to my tripod, uh, to, yeah, to my tripod in my box. I don't mind if it's sprinkling, but it just isn't possible because it just gets stuff wet, gets my paintings and everything wet. May streaming on Sunday? She's streaming Sunday? <gasps> Wait, did she change her day? Oh my gosh, that means I can actually watch. Heck yeah. Who is May? Who is this May person? Who's this crazy lady? <laughs> you changed it for me? No, May. Oh my god, are you kidding me? I feel so bad now. <laughs> oh no. Okay, well I'm definitely gonna be there, don't worry. I will I will just make sure. Who is May? May is a wonderful, amazing human, amazing artist. Uh, she streams over on Twitch. She's like my long lost internet waifu No, May. Wait. No, you changed it and well, you said it's because of me, but hopefully it's not totally because of me. But in that case, I especially want to make sure I'm there. And I love it. I've been looking forward to it all week. And when you didn't do it yesterday, I understood because I was also in the throes of Kickstarter hell. But I was like, oh no, I, I don't get my, my weekly May fix. <laughs> what am I going to do? I can definitely enjoy my weekend in many ways and it'll especially be possible if I get to watch you. Anyone into imaginative realism needs to check me out. Yeah, and just art in general. But she does a beautiful, and I guess that's the official term, imaginative realism. Planner videos are so inspiring because I'm the type of person that's intimidated if I don't have all the proper gear, but watching you go out and just do it reminds me I just need to do it. Oh my gosh, sacred. I completely understand. That's kind of the boat I was in when I first started way back in Denver. Uh, I, I did a couple videos when I was a super, super noob of plein air when I was back in Denver and kind of took people along on the journey. I even did a video at Red Rocks talking about being socially anxious and that one has gotten an insane amount of views and also I've gotten so many messages. Even still I get messages from that video of people thanking me for talking about that and sharing the process. Which it's crazy because it was so long ago. Uh, but I completely understand the hesitation 
And for the longest time, I was really scared of doing it in public because like people would come up and talk to you and want to see it. And um, I think because I stream, it helped me a lot to getting over that fear of feeling of, of people watching my process. But if I wasn't a streamer, I don't know, like it, it would have been a lot harder for me. Um, I don't think I could talk, read, be watched and do my passion. Kudos. Oh, <laughs> thanks Jig. It is definitely difficult. Uh, there's times when I'm feeling, I feel kind of overwhelmed streaming because if you're trying to be focused on what you're doing and have good conversations with people or talk through your process, it is, it's a lot to juggle, but that has been, it's, it's practice. Like just with anything else, the more you do it, the better you, or the easier it gets, the better you get at it. And I'm really thankful for it because it's gotten me to the point where like I'm excited and I want to do live workshops now and I don't think I man I never thought I would have done that when I first started uh the thought of that would like terrify me because I also kind of hate public speaking but like in a small group in a controlled situation I find that really appealing to to teach people live so that's my new thing for next year I'm gonna pursue that and maybe approach some community centers or galleries or something and see if they want to host it. Even if it starts off as being a meetup kind of thing and not necessarily a tutorial basis, just to get my feet wet, trying it out. You just have to do it. The more you do it, the more you'll do it. <laughs> Helps you see so much of the world. Intense concentration, plein air painting will change your life. Yeah. It it goes, for me, plein air, plein air goes hand in hand with how I connect to nature. Just, it, yeah. It's so immersive and... Oh, Jake, don't say that about yourself. Uh, but I, I'm glad you guys enjoy hanging out with me for this live art. How come the music is so quiet all of a sudden? It's weird. Oh, maybe my speaker's turned off. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So Sacred Heart, one thing you can do to get over that is find places that are more secluded. Go um, off trail, maybe. You don't even have to go very far off trail, but if you're out hiking, you can just like find a little pathway, get off the main path and people won't necessarily see you or they won't really want to come over to you because it would be extra intrusive <laughs> for them. Um, so you can do that. Or if you're in a public space, do your best to find something that's kind of off the main, out of the main area. Uh, or the thing that I did when I went to the, I used to, when I started planner painting, I went to the botanic gardens like all the time, like many times a week. That was my favorite place to practice. And it's thousands of people go through there. So you're surrounded by people. But the way that I did it was I, um, sunglasses and headphones. Sunglasses, it's people are less likely likely to kind of want to interact when you can't they can't see your eyes. And headphones, you can easily ignore people and not be rude because you're listening to your music. You might not even hear them. And I got away with it so much. Like I would be in the middle of a pathway listening to my music, painting, and because of that, like I don't really no one's talking to you because you, you have your headphones. It doesn't feel like you're really being watched. Like they might be watching you, but even if it sucks, even if what I'm doing sucks, I'm enjoying it. And I can just kind of ignore the fact that there's lots of people around me because I'm in the zone. It definitely helps. So if you're if you're kind of stuck in a place where you have to be around people, uh, it really is a good strategy. Um, watching a video lives by me and he's like painting 
right in the street. I want to do that. Oh yeah. He, he, he goes everywhere. He goes, I don't think he minds talking to people while he's painting and plus he's amazing. Like <laughs> his work is like mind blowing. <coughs> Excuse me. Like even if I'm doing a really loose sketch and I, in my personal opinion, isn't great. Like if it's not a very good painting, majority of the time people that stop and say something are like, oh, that's amazing. Cause if you think about it, they're like, maybe the majority of them are not artists. They barely know how to draw a stick figure, which by the way is like the most common thing people say to me when I'm out plein air painting. I can barely draw a stick figure. Uh, so in their mind, even your crappy drawing is better than anything they can do. And they just love the, it's like fascinating to them to get to witness this thing being created. So it's never, it, you should never really feel like you're being judged. Cause even, even if one of those people is an artist themselves, they completely understand cause either they're with, at your level or they were once at your level and they know everything that you have to do to like get through it. It's not there. I, I've, I don't think I've ever ran across an artist who is like super judgmental. If anything, they're just really excited to find another artist. <laughs> so that feeling of judgment is totally in your own head. It is, you're making it up. You're making it way worse than it really is. Straight line. I can't even draw a straight line. Yeah, neither can I. I mean, that's what I say every time, May. I'm like, straight line, like what? Who can just sit down and draw a perfectly straight line? It's like one of the hardest things. Hi, Kira. Sorry, I got in a little rant there. If I missed anything, please say it again. There's No straight lines in nature. Yeah, I doubt you're gonna come across a scene, except for a horizon line. Not even then, not always. But I, I don't think you have to worry about that too much. My favorite thing is when they're like, how long did that take you? And I'm like, 10 minutes and five years. So they always get a kick out of that because <laughs> it makes them think like, wait, what? Oh man, speaking of people talking to you in public, I had an awkward situation <laughs> when, oh wait, Slave of Hell, was I with you? We went down to Steel Falls and we were stopping at that little visitor center um, and I was walking into the building like we were gonna run to the restroom and fill our water or something. And there was a guy there with a pushad box. And I was like, oh my God, this is the first time I've ever seen a, an artist in the wild with a pushad box. So I immediately was like, hey, so you're an artist, where are you from? And I was like, totally not fangirling cause I didn't know who he was, but I was fangirling in the, in the way of like, I found another artist. And I could not shut up the whole time we were walking from the parking lot to the building. I was just like asking him a million questions and I could tell he kind of <laughs> was thrown off a little. He's just like, like, leave me alone lady. <laughs> but I couldn't help it. I was just so excited and I probably made a complete fool out of myself, but I found out that he, he didn't really want to give me any detailed information, but he was telling me that he is teaching, uh, workshop down south and he was just like driving through and he just is stopping for himself to paint in a few spots and you know all of that and I really wanted to ask him his name and like get his 
card and, and find out about his workshop and stuff, but I could tell I was already going too, too far. <laughs> so yeah, that, that was a little awkward, but... <laughs> They watch calligraphy videos and they make straight lines. They are wizards. They are. They are. It's. They're definitely using some kind of witchcraft. Also, hey Etty, new streaming platform. Well, it's new to me. This is only my second YouTube stream, so yeah, we'll see. Uh, what did I else? I was gonna do a, a forest, a coast, and a mountain with a valley, with the salt. Do a coast. West coast of, of sky. Big cliffs coming out of the water. Beaches. <laughs> Backed by showing your scratches. Yeah, did you see them? You see that? Vader's tattoos that he's given me this week? Be like, back off. <laughs> Just like, hold up my hand. You don't want to mess with my bodyguard. Hey, Carolyn, how are you? will be the beach. Uh, lots of reasons, Martin, but especially to, I guess, diversify my audience and my client base, which is not, it doesn't happen immediately. It takes time to do that. Uh, but yeah, I already was using YouTube since 2012 and uploading videos, trying to upload monthly, which was nearly impossible. But in doing this, I feel like it's a good way to get to know the, to get to know my YouTube community better. And it also creates more content for my video, for my channel automatically. So we'll use the salt in the beach and then maybe a little bit on the foreground rocks. Doing dog portraits. Oh, <laughs> is that because you don't want to paint them or just because you're tired or something? Oh no, I'm out of Potter's Pink. Okay, we'll make a sandy color.
use Twitch and only discover you here. I'm so glad you're here too. Oh, hello. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I definitely understand that, Carolyn. No water's pink, I know. It's one of my favorite colors, but I'm, I barely have any in my tube right now, so I'm trying to be very select when I use it. Yeah, I have found lately... Everything is just a mess in the past couple months here because I've been doing the Kickstarter fulfillment. So there's boxes everywhere. And then for a while I was doing the packaging in the living room. <laughs> Sorry, Wolfie. Uh, and I was also framing and mounting and doing all sorts of stuff in here for the art fair that's in two weeks. It's just... It, it, kind of overwhelms you after a while doesn't it Carolyn it gets you to the point where you just you know you need a change I do like organizing and rearranging things but okay it's like so dark in here it's what only 320 oh my gosh and it's <sighs> it's almost well it's not quite dark out but it's getting there <laughs> well, at least i know what opop -OP looks like Yeah, I think, oh, I have so many favorite colors, but Potter's Pink is way up there. It's a really amazing color to mix with, with to mix with a lot of other colors. All right, let's, let's let that dry and we'll do the base of the mountain one. I wanna do the Coolin Mountains. like a foggy day I've painted them so many times but I don't ever get sick of it <sighs> enjoy enjoy your lurk Let's see. I guess I could do autumn colors. I am This past week was insane because I did all of the Kickstarter packaging and labeling and shipping and I finished all of the Patreon postcards and stickers and I also framed, printed, cut, signed, and framed 23 paintings. Uh, and for prints I did like about 30 prints which I still need to do way more but all of those things were overlapping so you can probably imagine how big of a mess it was in here. <laughs> Looks like a tripod. Oh, it does. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, but when I look back on this week, even though it was crazy in the moment, when I look back on it, I'm just really happy and excited knowing that everything is out like for the Kickstarter and that now I can 100% focus on uh, getting everything ready for the art fair.
Uh, oh, Jigger, the Kickstarter is already done. Sorry, I should have mentioned, in case people didn't know about it, uh, I finished my Kickstarter. Uh, I can't remember now, <laughs> but like a month ago or some month and a half ago and shipped everything out yesterday. Uh, if it's for a children's book that I wrote and illustrated called Tree Girl, you can actually go search for it on Kickstarter if you just want to learn about it um, or go to my uh, website if you're interested in buying it. But it's a book to inspire kids to get out into nature. It's about a self-aware tree. <laughs> it's kind of, I mean, obviously it's like a fantasy story. But I got some exciting, an exciting message from Video Kid, who's my friend who lives down in England. She received her package already, which is crazy because I shipped them yesterday. And she said she read it to her daughter and her daughter kept wanting her to read it over and over again. And she really loved it, which was, I mean, that, that was like the biggest compliment ever. Cause I don't have kids. I never around kids. I don't even know what kids are like, but I knew that I wanted to share this message with children and encourage more of them to get into nature. Cause from the little that I've experienced, it's like, even as kids these days, they're so, like, they have smart, they can use iPads and smartphones and stuff already. <laughs> and I'm like, what? Oh my God. And not a lot of them, I think, are as connected to nature as I was when I was little. So yeah, it's, it's a simple message, but I feel like it's really important. that first layer dry. Oh god, digital. Oh no, don't say that. That scares me. I mean, worst case, I think they would just send it back to me digital. Like, I have my return address on everything, so... Um, by the way, for those of you who actually did back the Kickstarter, I will be typing in the tracking information this weekend so uh some local people are already receiving theirs and i haven't even typed in the information but uh, i th i think in europe usually you guys get it with anywhere from like three to ten days um and then across the pond it's usually like you know usa i think it's usually a week to two weeks but it depends because sometimes people get it really fast Okay, back to the forest. Kids are messy and gross, but mine's pretty cool. <laughs> Aww. Gifting her was a good move for whoever did it. Yeah, Slave of Hell, she was so happy. She was like, I can't believe this. That was really nice of you. Oh, she did good. Yeah, she's she's really excited about it. But just hearing that her kid liked it made me so ecstatic because I was I was kind of nervous. Like I had talked to my sister who has two little kids, and I actually wrote it specifically to, for them at first before it became a Kickstarter for it snowballed into the big project that it was. 
but it was definitely inspired by them and you know what's awesome my sister uh has read over a thousand books to her kids this year she's like got them on a super intense um i forgot what she called it literacy tr track and they're i think three and five now but they love it they love it so much and that makes me really happy knowing that they're really into reading and I think they get captured their, their imaginations are really strong so I can't wait to send it to her <laughs> okay jig <laughs> sounds good Sounds, uh, sounds interesting. Love to hear about that sometime. Wow. I mean... I don't know anything about the situation digital like if they are being treated unfairly or you know conditions are bad or something then I'm I'm proud of them for doing that because that's definitely not easy one thing I have I do struggle with as an artist who creates physical things that are sent out into the world is I struggle with the idea that I create things that have a could potentially have a high carbon footprint meaning you know how carbon footprint relates to how much energy did that thing need in order to exist and to for it to leave my house and to get to the client you know that's fuel and boats or airplanes or where however it's getting to that point is even more so I do I struggle knowing that <laughs> Sometimes just thinking about that makes me really depressed and I'm like, oh, I'm just going to do digital art forever, but it's not my passion. <laughs> Although I am doing more digital art these days because I discovered ways to make the process feel more like my traditional work. Anyway, I'm going on another rant, sorry. <laughs> but yeah that's another side to it like if if I'm shipping things and I'm kind of relying on that as a to make a living but the system is broken and even the people within the system are rebelling and having to go on strikes and stuff to defend their to defend themselves then that really bothers me <laughs> that worries me Sorters wages contracts and pay prematurely without consulting the unions oh wow yeah uh, it is the peak season right now isn't it holiday season what time is it Three thirty. And what day is it? I don't even know. 22nd, okay. Um, so next week, let's see, it's the end of the month. So I'm streaming on Monday on Twitch, streaming on Friday on YouTube, and then the first, December 1st, is the next paint along. So if you guys are interested, we're gonna be doing a gouache paint along and landscapes. Um, if you want to join in, it's going to be here on YouTube on Sunday the 1st. It's the first time I'm doing it on YouTube. 
It's Thursday. No, it's not. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna throw you out the window. I was really tricked at first. God, I should have known. Don't ask the internet what day it is. It was too easy, Corvulus. Far too easy. Happy birthday, digital mom. Hey, dragon. Yeah, digital mom. I'm so curious about what's going to be the best selling thing at the art fair because I've completely changed my setup since the last one. I've completely changed what I'm selling, how it's displayed. different clientele. It's going to be city folk over in Glasgow. Oh god. I somehow got a chunk of salt in my mouth. Oh, that was gross. Probably too much Sacred Heart. Over the years, I mean, that that must add up. I can't. Oh. 
well yeah for sure accidentally <laughs> don't ever do it on purpose it's not good completely accidental don't do it all right I wonder if this one is dry yeah, pretty much the texture in the background came out pretty well definitely makes it feel kind of lush although the the overall colors are quite muted. This one, I want to work on this one, but it's not quite dry yet. I'm so impatient. I think my other pages are probably dry now. Um, those ones are like sort of wet still. The bigger chunks are wet. It might be okay. Uh, I actually have used, let me see if I have that sketchbook. I don't know which one it is. Uh... actual example for you of the gouache with salt. I don't know where it is. I haven't looked at this one in a while. No, that's not salt. That one's not. Um, I should have marked the page. Was that it? No, I think that one was just wet. I did it on stream. Oh, this one. Okay, so this is gouache and salt and water, obviously. Uh, so the top was created by getting the paper wet first and then touching in this gouache and letting it kind of fade. But it doesn't quite, it, it kind of stays put a little bit easier than watercolor does so it's because it's a little heavier i guess um but it's still you can still get like a cool foggy effect but then um i did this layer down here and as that was drying i dropped in some salt and you can see it's not quite as intense but it does give you a texture and i also did a little bit of some splatter but I don't know why there's two blue dots on there. <laughs> um, 
wish mine would look so clean. Oh, this was definitely just taping off the edges, every single page, tape it off. It's the only way I can keep them clean. <laughs> so you, you, if you tape it off, you can be as messy as you want inside that tape and it won't matter. Like the, the, the rest of it will look super clean. And especially if you do it the same tape on every page, it looks like a finished picture book in a way. Like I could just get this like replicated as a book. I kind of want to do another gouache book. Oh, I used a little salt on this one, I think. Right there. Uh, so yeah, you can do it. It get You get a subtle texture. Maybe it depends on how much water versus how much pigment you're using. It looks published. <laughs> It would be cool to, to be able to just like hand that to someone, uh, like a printer or I don't know who, but hey, please make this into a book. You po saw those paint, you paint those on stream. Yeah, I did a bunch of them offline because it was, I, the beginning of that book is all homework for my um, Nathan Falk schoolism class that I did, his gouache and watercolor sketching class. And then the rest, the second half of the book is like plein air or studio studies. And I did quite a few on stream. I also did a few videos on YouTube for those. She got this replicated as a book. I don't know how, how would I do that? Would I just, I guess I would have to take photo, like high quality photos of every single page and just format it. Oh, well, I guess I, I made Tree Girl. I can do the same kind of thing as long as I find a printer who has a format that I like. You could do a book, How to Paint with Gouache. That would be cool. I would buy it. I could do that. Maybe I could also, if I did that, I would also want to offer like a digital version for a cheaper price. Um... Was that all gouache? Is that a watercolor moleskin size? Yeah, so... <laughs> uh, I should keep this handy because this will be good reference for the paint along next week. But these are all gouache. The whole book is gouache, gouache only. Even the black and white was just black and white gouache. And those were plein air studies. That was the end of the schoolism homework. And then the rest was my own stuff. And it's the, I don't know why they call it the large. It's the Moleskin watercolor album and it's five by eight, I believe, but I think they call it the large. You might want to double check that, but it's basically five by eight. And for some reason, when I was in the, was that when I was in Denver, I could get them pretty easily. But when I moved to Scotland, I could only find the Spanish version online. <laughs> Maybe it's different now because they became like super, super popular, but it's really good paper for gouache studies. I found it's not too super smooth, but it has a little bit of tooth to it, which I like for gouache. I like to be able to like catch the paper a little bit on, catch the pigment on the paper. So. You know, it depends on your preference, I guess. Some people prefer to paint on super smooth paper with gouache, which I can kind of understand. I, I really don't like painting on rough paper with gouache unless it has a pre-layer of watercolor on it. Um, need to be scanned, very good photos. Yeah, I wish I had a scanner for small stuff. I, for all of my prints that I've ever made, I've taken photos with my DSLR, uh, which is fine. Like I get super, super high quality photos enough to make prints, but for small stuff like this, it's so annoying to take a photo. Like when I take, I take photos of my Patreon postcards every month and I have like 20 individual images that I have to crop down and, um, adjust and like all of that. It's oh, it takes forever. Having a scanner would be so convenient for small stuff. 
maybe you should bring this on your trip. Um, I have multiple sketchbooks started. <laughs> I'll show you my most recent one. So this is my current moleskin, which has, I started this July 22nd, 2018. Yeah. <laughs> But the reason it's not finished yet is because I was originally only using it for plein air painting. So all of these are done outside from life. And it was a busy year, so I didn't get out as much. Um, Slave of Hell will recognize some of these. I don't think I've shown all of these before. There's a page I still, still haven't done yet. So that one has started, but then someone gifted me a Sea White of Brighton sketchbook, which I kind of fell in love with. And I don't know, just with watercolor especially, it works, in my opinion, it's much nicer than the moleskin. So now, once I got this one, I switched to only doing gouache in my moleskins which I don't take out for plein air that often so therefore this sketchbook is still only a quarter used <laughs> but um this one I found to be much more pleasant of an experience with watercolor so I started taking this one out instead I mean I also do stuff in the studio with it studies and stuff. There's gouache. I actually don't like gouache on this paper, which is funny. I'm too particular. <laughs> I'm way too particular with my paper and my the things I use on them. I think that was the most, no, not the most recent one of them. probably recognize these from Instagram if you follow me. That's it. Looks like memories of Twitch. Really? Why? Uh, you missed it. What is that sketchbook called? Oh, uh, well, the the older ones that I was using are the moleskin, which I guess it's also moleskine, but I always said moleskin, so I just kept saying that. And then the this newer one is the Sea White of Brighton. Does that have it printed in there? It looks like this. And it's the Watercolor Sketchbook by Sea White of Brighton. All right, that was a, a detour and a half. <laughs> but I guess it gave this time to dry. Do you guys obsess over supplies as well? I love talking about art supplies. Um, have you ever thought about making some of your landscapes into stickers? I've done that once or twice for my Patreon stickers, as you probably remember. But otherwise, I haven't really thought about it. Is that a thing? 
Like, would people be interested in that? Uh, also, hey, Stephanie. The Arteza ones are nice and cheaper if they are easy to get where you are. Um, I don't know. I haven't tried. To, I haven't looked into that. Obsessed with supplies. <laughs> oh, geez. Oh, Brie. Going to an art store is also, like, it's torture because I don't have a lot of money to spend, so... But it's also just wonderful to walk up and down the aisles and, like, fantasy shop. <laughs> like, what would I buy if I had money right now? And then spending, like, two hours picking out one thing. Maybe, maybe more people are interested in Corvillus, but they never really thought to ask about it. I guess I could just make a few and see if they sell. Would they be in like a rectangular format, much like the painting? Or would I turn them into circular stickers? Which I've, that's what I did, I think, for the YouTube, or for the Patreon versions. criminally cheap. Oh. Don't use Arteza greens and browns. I hated how they looked, the watercolor ones. Oh, I wouldn't ever use the paint. I, I don't need to get paint by anything, by any other companies, but the pap paper and sketchbooks I'm always on the lookout for, for good ones. Uh, but that reminds me in December, I'm going to be making my own sketchbook out of Arches watercolor paper. And I'll probably stream that process on Twitch, so it'll be a Monday. And depending how it goes, if I enjoy the process, if it, if it works out well, I will continue to do that. I'll continue to make my own. And then if it, you know, if people are interested, we could do like a tutorial thingy because there's a lot of advantages to doing that you can pick exactly what size you want your paper that you love use as many sheets as you want you need a donation button uh, I have a donation link for my twitch I don't know if I have a command for it. Um, I have a wish list. That's that's the only command I have that works here. <laughs> but yeah, I have a donation button through my Twitch stream. I haven't quite figured out how to do that on YouTube yet. It's just like um, Streamlabs is the service that I use to do it on my Twitch channel.
Um, I'm really excited to make my own sketchbook though, because you get really spoiled when you're using nice paper in the studio. And then if you go outside and start painting and your sketchbook isn't the greatest, it's like, oh god. Feels like you're kind of starting over <laughs> as, an, as a painter. It's frustrating. Four o'clock. Okay. The rocks are taking a hit today. What are you doing? I I, I don't understand. <laughs> uh, I mean, I know very little about. My brother's a geologist, and I remember him talking about certain things that they would have to do in the lab. Um, also, he either he had or my mom had or I don't know. I remember seeing a tumbler at one point, a rock tumbler, which like polishes rocks. You made a couple sketchbooks. Oh, how did you use a tutorial or did you just like go to a class? Like, did you wing it? What was your what was your process, Earth? Oh, Wolfie's calling. One second. Hey. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Uh, I made a couple sketches. Oh, Sea Lemon. Yes, I was referred to her by someone and I now subscribe to her. So when the time comes, I'm probably going to use her videos to help me. I'm going to redo this mountain one. Jared! You need to get in to set a calendar reminder. Yeah, or if you do the set reminder thing on the YouTube channel, it will email you when it's time. Unless you just don't check your emails very often. Wolfie hasn't gotten your schedule. I know, <laughs> I know it's funny because it's like, even though I'm not, uh, even though I'm over on YouTube instead of Twitch right now, it's still the same schedule basically. It's like, come on, how long have I been doing this? <laughs> Uh, you learned how to bind books from her. Oh god, I got another piece of salt. Ugh. Oh, it's so strong. You're an archaeologist and you analyze lithic stone, t lithics stone tools and debris created when one makes a stone tool. Wow. Being an artist. Here I am. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, I actually really enjoy painting rocks and drawing rocks. Every time. <laughs> no, I swear. Elephants are afraid of bees. Says who?
By the way, Itchy, I meant to add you on PlayStation. I'll have to do that tonight. Hope it's easy. Oh, yeah, Jared is Itchy Nipples, by the way. From Twitch. And his PlayStation name is even better. It's itchy! <laughs> yes! <laughs> One of the few times that that is a good thing, right? <laughs> Screaming out, it's itchy! stitch binding and since the paper is thick I just I just used one folded sheet per signature to be careful with it oh be careful with the stitching okay yeah I'm probably just gonna use my 140 pound paper so it's pretty sturdy but I'd have to be I actually still need to get like proper needles to do that with. There's our our beach scene with the uh, salt effect. Probably. By the way, Itchy, we started watching Mandalorian. Only one episode in so far. And I won't talk about it in case, you know, I don't want to do spoilers, but... Oh my god! <laughs> Look at those white caps. Yeah, the salt gave it kind of an interesting texture right by the shoreline.
save the backboards for your sketch pads because they make great covers cut them to size oh good idea yeah but I also have um oh god words are failing me I have backer boards that I use for prints like that I used at the comic con which I think will work really well um, but if I ever want to do like a small size, this would probably be perfect. Uh, maybe, maybe the arches one would be good too, because it's really thick. Kinson right. XL watercolor and one in Bristol. Use crochet thread. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's good to know. Crochet thread. This desk is getting a deep clean this weekend. We are too itchy. Like I said, it's only one. Ep we're only one episode in so far, but okay. Do you guys want to see the results of the test on the Bockingford paper? So here is the first random one we did, and then here is the beach scene, which have to take the salt off still. Actually, I'm going to do this. Oh, actually, I'll use my tray. Perfect. So it kind of worked for the splashes on the water for the waves. Maybe if I had left a little bit more of the paper showing through on the rocks, it would have been more dramatic, but still kind of cool. pretty <laughs> barely did anything on that one probably because again I didn't do it fast enough but it's pretty intense gift sent oh my goodness <laughs> thank you so much Jig oh I can't wait to get something in the mail it's like Christmas every time I get a wishlist thing I'll have to, if it, if it arrives this week, I'll definitely share it on stream next week. Yeah, I'll have to do like proper photos of these in the daylight cause it's all, it's all dark now and it's always so nice to see everything in the daylight. <laughs> Does that sound bother anyone? Finland postal joke here 
Oh, <laughs> nope, not in Finland. <laughs> what time do you start on Fridays? Uh, so I set a I schedule it ahead of time. So if you're ever wondering, just go to my YouTube page and check out upcoming live streams. Um, I was going to start at two o'clock today, but I ended up starting at one o'clock, uh, mostly because I've I think Wolfie's arriving home a little bit earlier today, so... Uh, I'm gonna try to make sure I stay very diligent with my schedule so that if I schedule a stream, it doesn't change at the last minute, unless it's gonna... unless I'm starting a little bit early. So, there is our balking furred. I actually really like how subtle it is on the ones where I waited a little bit longer compared to immediately putting the salt on it. So it's, it's cool. Only thing that bothers you about the sound is that it'll stop at some point. Oh, so May is a fan, okay. May is a fan. is like intense grains. Oh my god! Jeez. Okay, that is kind of fascinating. The giant- on this paper in particular, the giant granules, they leave a mark uh, they kind of like leave a dark spot underneath them. It's like they soak up all the pigment and then it just sits there and stains the paper underneath each one. So it almost looks like the granules are still on the paper, right? Is that just me or does, do you guys think it kind of looks like that? It's like something is sitting on the paper still. So that's interesting. <laughs> Uh, on the finer grain salt, it, it doesn't really look like that, so... Like, I think it's beautiful. A little bit on that one. But it's... It's not as dark underneath each one. Yeah, there's like chunks of salt everywhere. Oh my god, that was like really stuck. <laughs> I like it on this paper too. There's the medium and there's the coarse. The coarse one really made it... It didn't make a very big... Um, didn't make very big cells. That's really strange. Yeah, I'm gonna reuse it, itchy. <coughs> I have to separate it by color though because the pieces of salt will soak up the actual color of your pigment. So you wouldn't want to use this on like a yellow wash because then it'll taint the paper and the, the color. Uh, 
a uh, shoe box to scrape the salt into. Yeah, that's a good idea, but I already had salt all over the place, so I'm just scraping it into this tray and I'll just put that in a bag later. This is the Arches cold press, which is my favorite. And it has So this is uh, the coarse ground salt. That's waiting no time. That's just immediately putting it in and that is waiting five minutes. So as you can see, the paper was pretty much dry. It didn't really do much. You can see a little bit, but this is the medium. Putting it in the paint immediately when it's wet versus five minutes, which again, it's very, very, very subtle. This is the fine putting it in immediately versus five minutes. Extremely subtle. So maybe you could wait like three minutes and you'll get more dramatic effects, but that's like on the other end of the spectrum where it's almost completely dry. but it's by Saunders Waterford. It's, uh, sorry, not coarse. It's called Rough Paper. So this one is the coarse. Versus, and that's putting it in the paper paint immediately versus, uh, what did I say, three minutes. So much different. And then this is the medium ground. So left side, obviously, when you immediately put it in the paint, you get intense <laughs> versus the right side. Same with the fine. But I really like how the fine looks because it looks very wispy, like even this one. It's really cool. And the hot press. Last but not least. The hot press is very dramatic. There's the course. That was putting it in immediately versus waiting three minutes. So it does spread a little bit further when you put it in immediately, but you still get like a crazy texture. This was the medium ground. They look pretty similar to me. I guess I could have waited longer on the timed one. And this is the fine. But it's so dramatic compared to the other pages, other papers. It's like higher contrast or something. 
which must have something to do with the texture of the paper or lack thereof. Oh God, I can feel like pieces of salt under my feet. <laughs> Ugh. All right, cool. And there you have it. There's our experiment. Salt is so much fun, but it's so messy. But I'm glad I did it because now I have all these awesome cheat sheets for future paintings. Just clip them together and they'll go on my wall of swatches basically. <laughs> What should I do? Should I do one more painting or should we just call it? This one isn't even finished yet. gosh you guys I can't tell you oh wait I haven't even seen you all since I since it happened since it happened but if you were in discord then you already heard about it but I have some exciting news I passed my UK driver's test on Tuesday. I can officially go out and do painting on my own in cool places. I don't need a ride, don't need to take a bus or a train or whatever. So I am really, really excited to do some more oil painting outside just in time for winter. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> it's fine. Okay, the songs are repeating, I just realized. Let's go to Ambient. Hope everyone has a really good weekend. Get out and paint or do some drawing or painting in the studio. Didn't you have a US license? Yes, hey Wasabi. Yeah, uh, but yeah, the foreign license is only valid for one year in the UK. And 
and you can only do a exchange if you're from a certain place or if you have a specific type of license. So in that case, like didn't apply to me. So I had to take the theory test, which is the written portion and then take the practical test, which is the driver's test. And it was a very long and expensive process. I'm so relieved that it's over. I'm really bad with tests in general. Like I have extreme performance anxiety, but the guy that I got on Tuesday was, <laughs> he was very, it, it's, I swear it was like the easiest test in the world. He was so, seemed so casual about it, um, but he was talking a lot about politics and I was like, oh my God, dude, I can't talk about this right now. I'm, I was just like really trying to focus, was like, leave me alone. Don't bring this up. <laughs> But that is basically what happens to me everywhere I go. As soon as people hear my accent, they start asking about politics. But we don't, we're not going to go there. This is a politics free zone. Um, well, wasabi, first of all, the light, the, the test here is in my opinion, much harder than in the U S no offense to us people. Like I drove for 15 years in the U S and I was fine. I never got in an accident or obviously I didn't die, but the test here, they, they want to see you do things in a very specific, um, a very specific order. And they want to, they ask you to do certain things um, that if you don't take a lesson or if you don't have someone who could train you on those things, then you instantly fail. So under Wolfie's encouragement, <laughs> and then later I was like very glad that he encouraged me to do it. I took driver lessons here and I was so glad I did because... There were so many things she told me about that I never would have thought about and I would have like just instantly failed. And that's after driving for 15 years. Isn't that ridiculous? It's like such a formality. It's ridiculous. But uh, yeah, it turned out fine. I, I got it. <laughs> So yeah, driver lessons are like, she was 28, no, 18, no, 20, 24, 26, I don't know, average 25 per lesson. And then the test itself is like 60 pounds or something like that. Oh my gosh. Wolfie's friend at work failed like six times <laughs> and I was just, I can't even imagine the torture. But man, I am so excited. You guys, the first I'm trying to think of where the first place I want to paint is. Like, where do I want to go now that I have... I'm thinking I'm going to drive over to uh, the West Coast with my oil paint. I really want to paint the coast. I'm just... I live not near... I live near uh, a Firth. It's like a waterway. But I really want to paint the ocean. I want to paint the coast. And at the moment, it doesn't take us too long to get there. 
and it's very dramatic over there. Okay, these are little tests. All right, guys, I think I'm gonna call it here. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it, even though it was kind of a weird experimental stream. And next week, so I'm streaming Monday on Twitch and then next Friday is here on YouTube again. Next week is all about gouache because on December 1st, we're doing the gouache paint along, paint along. <laughs> and I want to just be in like a gouache mindset. So get ready for gouache week. <laughs> I am really excited. I love gouache and it'll be good because I haven't done it in a little while. So I guess other than that, I don't think I have any other announcements. Uh, but if you aren't, um, subscribed you can hit the little bell button down or the little subscribe button and then if you click the bell it sends you reminders when i upload a video or go live and yeah thank you again i really have fun with these streams they're very relaxed oh good i'm glad i'm glad i experiment a lot so it's kind of fun to share it with people um but i hope you all have an amazing weekend get out and paint if you can otherwise if it's gross and icky out like it is here i hope you get some good studio work done and yeah i guess i will see you next time have a good night guys <laughs>